Hello everyone. Do you remember not so long ago we tested two Rupert drops for strengths with a 110 hydraulic press? And the angry comments flowed in. Many believed that the experiment was conducted incorrectly because the tail of the drop touched the press. And that, as you know, is the weakest point of the drop. In the first case, okay, I agree, it touched the... But it can be seen in slow motion. But in the second case, well, I don't really see what here it touched. Nevertheless, it was decided to conduct a repeat experiment. To do this, it was decided to melt a little glass in a homemade furnace using an oxygen propane burner. And that's when our problem started. The drops, one by one, burst when they hit the water. And after a billion attempts, I had to entrust this matter to the professionals. We ordered drops from a local glass factory. And after talking with some experienced glass blowers, we found out that even despite their many years of experience, even they can have at least 10 attempts to make one Rupert drop. Well, there you go. We already have 10 drops. And according to the statistics, about half of them will have the real properties that were attributed to them. And here, right here, you can see a vivid example of this. After a day, one drop burst by itself without any impact. One of the signs that the drops have turned out is the presence of a cavity inside. Many will think that this cavity is an air bubble, that it's a defect. But no, it's not an air bubble. This is a vacuum bubble. This vacuum bubble should be in the Rupert's drop. And this is what happens to the Rupert's failed drop. When the tail breaks off, the whole thing just shatters. The resulting drop, when the tail is broken off, crumbles into small shards. Well, let's start our test. We will try to place the drop so that the press affects only its upper part of the tail that would not be affected at all. And now we will set the press to move at its lowest speed possible. It can't be, does it really have strength like this? After all, this is exactly the results many have seen on foreign channels. How can a piece of glass leave such a dent in this press? Guys, don't always believe what they show you. This is lead. By the way, who immediately realized that this was lead? Write in the comments. I'll tell you about another interesting observation. When we were melting a piece of lead, I conducted an interesting parallel experiment. After all, you all know that lead is much heavier than iron. So in theory, iron should float in it, like wood in water. Well, look right here, the nut is floating in it. And it is floating, not touching the bottom. Now we'll try to sink it. So now back to the drops. We will press them in a normal way on a normal steel stand. Ah, yes, you asked me to show you the pressure with which the drop will collapse. Well, here you go. The drop burst at a load of three tons. This corresponds to one division on the pressure gauge. The fact is that this stand is made of very dense, hardened steel. Now let's change our stand to a softer steel stand. So to speak, let's give the drop a few more chances here. But 
but this drop was clearly defective. It burst, the needle of the pressure gauge did not even twitch. Well, as you can see, it's impossible to put this drop on the stamp normally without touching its tail. So let's try to pop up the tail a little bit with a match so that it won't be hung out. There were already about four tons here. And in slow motion, in addition to glass fragments, you can even notice sparks. And now let's try to crush the largest drop we have. This one has withstood the usual six tons. And here in slow motion you can notice the sparks. Now let's look at the process of splitting a drop frame by frame, and sparks will clearly be visible there. Where I wonder do these sparks come from? Write in the comments. During the experiment we found out that the larger the size of the drop, the more pressure it can withstand. And I'll let you know, this is not the end of the experiment. In the near future, we will try to either get or make a Rupert's Drop that is as huge as we can make it possible and test it for strength with a 100-ton hydraulic press.